Thank you, everybody, for uh, coming out on a Thursday night. I'm uh, surprised and really happy and uh, grateful that uh, spirit moved everybody to come out on Thursday. I don't know why, why not, but, uh, but I'm glad that, uh, that it happens now. We're used to this weekend kind of a, a thing. We had a, uh, a concert, sort of a, we've done things in the past where it's very thematic, or we do the works of one composer. But uh, tonight's more of a, a varied program, just like a regular concert. In fact, I even thought of it, but I didn't do it of printing a program because we know what this, we know what we're going to do. And the, the, we're going to start out with a tune that I that I wrote. Uh, it's, it's called Sonny's Exercise, and it's a it's a steal from. Uh, there's very few films of of Art Tatum, uh, pianist. Uh, uh, there's three or four. Uh, and one of them, he, he's doing a, a piece called Tiny's Exercise, and he played with his, piano, his guitarist, Tiny Grimes. And uh, uh, I think he, they're all, they're all great the players in a group, but I, it has a feeling like the Tiny's Exercise really was something that Tatum might have written out for his guitar player to practice. And it's all this thing in, uh, in thirds. And it's if you look up Art Tatum on YouTube, and look up Tiny's Exercise, you, you'll see it. that's where I, I got this idea. So I just called it Sonny's Exercise. And, uh, it's, uh, and it's been really helpful. Like if you do an exercise and you find out what's like physical therapy and you find something that works for you and helps you get around. And so this is, for, it's good for piano players. And we're gonna play it. It's a, it's a blues in three, four time. Ready? Ready. No.
Thank you. Thank you. Well, it's, it is a, it's a warming up exercise. Now, uh, the, next, the next tune is very different. Do it. It's a uh, little known tune by the uh, composer, bass player uh, Charles Mingus uh, called The Man Who Never Sleeps. And it's, uh, it's, there's one recording of it on YouTube. And I found it in a book, and it's real. It's an unusual piece in a way. It's very slow. It's, uh, and I think Mingus uh, was um, was the man who never sleeps. He had an uh, insomnia problem all the time. And the song, I think, uh, if you listen to, to the harmonies and the movement, I could see somebody who couldn't sleep like just playing that song for a long time over and over. And uh, it's, uh, that's the way I feel. Uh, so it's a song needs to be heard. So we're working on that. Trying to that project. <laughs>
Yeah. Thank you. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great song, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. and a very un, uh, un, underheard on a, a song. It's, it's great to find it. Found it in a book. And we're going to keep the show going with uh, a very different feeling now. Um, that was a man who never sleeps, a kind of a melancholy. This is called uh, How My Heart Sings. And it's uh, by Earl Zinders. Who uh, and Bill Evans famously uh, recorded it. It was, it was in, in his repertoire uh, a lot of the for uh, most of his life. So we're going to play How My Heart Sings. We'll tell you. Now we should tell them now. Tell them now. Yeah. We're laughing because we have a program that's totally different than oh, the two of these <laughs> <laughs> so we, we were smart to get our music all in order, but what did I forget? Uh, uh, well, that's the order you gave us originally. So this is how we had arranged our music. Uh, that's too bad. I, I think I twitched the oracle in the band. Uh, <laughs> is that all right? Uh, yeah, here we go. It's a good one. We won't leave away. anything out, but I'm sorry about that. <laughs> You never know what he's going to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice I hope I didn't change too much else. Okay. Yeah, with jingle bells. Nice. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. By the way, this is not my bass. Don't you really know my bass? This belongs to my friend Danny, who's sitting in the audience somewhere. Or there he is. That's Danny's bass. And it's a very beautiful bass and it's very young. It's not an old how old is it, Dan? About four years? No more than that. I think it's six. Six years? Yeah. And mine is a hundred, so <laughs> it's a whole different sound, but it's beautiful. And my bass fell into pieces. You guys want to tell them about what happened to the bass? It's still traumatic. I'm still going to lose It was like seeing somebody get hit by a car. Yeah. I'm glad yeah. I wasn't there. Yeah, we were in a rehearsal and the bass was hooked to a wire that went to the speaker. And I went over to change a piece of music and put it in the computer and stepped into the wire and the whole thing fell apart. Oh, it snapped off. Oh my God. The whole thing fell apart. Oh in front of God. It. So I sent it to Cambridge, New York to a luthier, wonderful guy who brought it back today and put it all back together. Mm. Just amazing. And it was it was a disaster. <laughs> I can imagine that's traumatic. Yeah, it was traumatic. We were so thank you, Danny. Oh, yeah. I was noticing the um, the the neck is like either way worn down or or somebody just sanded it or something. On this? Yeah, because it's got a oh, link. Uh, it's just the finish. The, the, oh it's a different finish. Yeah. Okay. It's a matte finish and then it the, um, the, that was built in Connecticut. Okay. In Mystic. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Did you like the way it sounds? I did. Yeah. So it's got a beautiful sound. That's, considering it's only six years old. You're playing. It's a good one. The headstock on yours just snapped off. Yeah, snapped right off. The whole thing. And then put it back together. Was there is there a joint there when it snapped off like at a joint or just well there's a there's a joint here. He thought it was gonna snap it snapped here. This came this whole piece came off. The whole front of it, this fell it cracked all over the place. But when I bring it back next time I'll show you how we repair it. Amazing. These guys are unbelievable what they can do. The craftsmen. Did he, yeah, take, the, did he ever take the top off? Oh, yeah, he took, he took the top off. You can show us the photos of it uh, I flying out of the forensic table. There. <laughs> 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 That's my surgery. White coats. Yeah. 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 Did, he, did he find some old boots in there? I don't know what he found. He wouldn't tell me. <laughs> but he's driving a very expensive car. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, thank you. Yeah. And that's one of those first tunes that has, uh, you're playing in 3-4 for a while and then you're playing in 4-4 four, four for a little while later. And it's one of those, an early tune to have that feature. And it's a great composition. Now we're going to play the one I think we should have played a minute ago. We're going to play the, the song called The Oracle, which is, uh, I didn't know this tune until Tim brought this into the group. And it's it's in 6-4 time. So usually you think 6-4, it's 1-2-3, 1-2-3. So this is 1-2-3-4 and 1-2. So it's a kind of a different way to... There's one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two. Or you can hear it that way anyway. And, it's, it's, uh, and then things are written. It's by Dave Holland, a, a bass player. Did I say enough about that? <laughs> I don't know if I was talking to Keith. Yeah. <laughs> uh.
Thank you, buddy. Yeah, nice song. Yeah, Dave Holland, uh, the, the Oracle. Yeah, six four is a cool time, <laughs> uh, which I didn't know about. Uh, now uh, we've got melancholy moments. Now we're going to play a, another tune, a different kind of feeling altogether. Um, this is one I wrote, uh, and I, the title speaks for itself. It's called Melancholy Moments.
Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for hanging in, in the audience, on Thursday night. And uh, it, was, uh, it was just melancholy to, to play it. The, uh, we're going to play, uh, what's our next one? Oh, a furry is out of character. <laughs> what's next? Uh, okay. I've got uh, My Romance. Oh, wow, really? Uh, it's like a, an old standard song that uh, uh, Bill Evans kind of made his own, but playing it a lot, changing it around. But it's uh, Richard Rogers. Let me get my... Thank you. 
got a few more, a few more to do. I'm going to play uh, this, uh, another song that I wrote, I don't know, maybe it's, uh, 10 years ago. Uh, and it, it's a, the name is uh, um, Chimera, C-H-I-M-E-R-A. But it's, uh, it could be Chimera, Chimera. It's, and it's, uh, it's a monster. It's uh, an animal that with uh, several parts and from mythology. Nobody knows this word other than me. It's, uh, <coughs> so the song has, um, it's in th uh, three different time signatures. So it's a monster itself. <laughs> and that's how it got its name. So we're going to play uh, Chimera. It starts, uh, it's got four, 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 11, four, and then seven, four. There won't be a quiz though, so it's, we'll get it. All right. <laughs>
that's the, thank you. That's the chimera, the mythical monster. The uh, great. Our, uh, yeah, it was fun. <laughs> it keeps you on your toes if you have to keep changing times and uh, knowing where you are. We're going to do um, another one that, uh, two more to do. And we get, this one's um, called Sare Sasa, which here is an old, uh, it's, those are the words of an old uh, mantra, a Hindu mantra, right, where they thought that it was original, uh, they call them primal sounds. And Sare Sasa was often the, the, the mantra that everybody would do before they did all the other mantras. And with, uh, <laughs> I don't have a very good whistle. But Somebody just get a foul? <laughs> <laughs> I need a real good whistle for Sare Sasa.
nice surprise. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Well, we got one one more song. That was uh, yeah, nice to hear that. Uh, Kalimba. Yeah. Our l- last song for the evening is called. Uh, it's going to be a lullaby. It's uh, another song we did uh, by Earl Zinders. Uh, it's uh, for his daughter Helene, and I've told this story before, but it's good enough to tell a short version of it. But one time, it was like 30 years ago, I was in the bookstore, and I had a table here, and I was sitting behind the table and playing Bill Evans on the audio cassette player. And this young woman came in the door, and she was standing at the door, and she said, uh, oh, it's so nice to hear Bill Evans in, uh, in Vermont. And I said, well, uh, well, it's nice that you know who Bill Evans was. <laughs> and, she, and she said, uh, uh, she said, my father used to work with him. So I said, all the way across the room, I said, uh, um, what instrument does your father play? And she said, he's really more of a composer. And I said, your father's not Earl Zinders. And she said, yes, it was. <laughs> and so she was, I gave her anything she wanted in the store. <laughs> and she's, uh, she's uh, told her father, she called him up that night, said, there's a man in Vermont who knows your music. <laughs> so apparently he wasn't a world famous composer yet. And, uh, but he'd, he'd written uh, How My Heart Sinks that we played earlier this evening, and uh, Elsa, and uh, another one called Mother of Earl that had been, have been recorded by jazz players a little bit. And so he'd, uh, I, we wound up corresponding until he died. And he sent me, uh, I, I said, oh, you have, do you have more tunes like this? Could you send me other tunes? And he, he, he did, and there were, he was way ahead of me, and it was really a big help and inspiration. His regular job was um, a percussionist with the San Francisco Symphony, but he was, uh, he liked to write songs and he was in the <laughs> army, he was a pal of Bill Evans. So they, uh, he liked, to, he was very versatile. He wrote a lot of music for voice and piano and he wrote some things for like uh, brass quintets and, so, and he wrote some symphonic music. But uh, nobody knows about him yet. <laughs> but we're gonna do this lullaby for Helene. And Helene is his daughter, the one that came to the bookstore. All right, thanks for sitting through that story again. (laughs) All right, one, two,
lullaby yeah and uh, that's a mysterious kind of a, a nostalgic kind of quality and the 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 mother of Helene was uh, Hungarian and uh, and Earl I think was Scottish the, but they're uh, it's a beautiful song and I hope everybody uh, checks it out and enjoys it in the future thank you everybody that's all we're gonna do tonight but I appreciate your uh, Attention, and, uh, and we were talking about it before. It's just like yeah, if you're going to give a play and nobody shows up, it's it's terrible. And everybody who comes here contributes in a major way. I always say it, and it's always true. And each person, and I, I know some of you, some of you I don't, but I appreciate uh, everybody's attention, and it makes uh, makes it way better than uh, if we were just rehearsing. Yeah, the rehearsing's great too, but uh, we have a, it gives us some extra energy that is. Uh, can't quantify, but thank you. Thank you. Thank That's you. all we got. Thank you.